、これよりインターロップ基調講演 KA7 を開始させていただきます。Good afternoon, everybody.、Um, thank you so much for your time today.、Uh, my name is Scott Snedden. I'm a solutions architect at Nuage Networks, and、uh, I'm responsible for business development here in the Asia region、uh, for Nuage.、Um, and it, it's my pleasure to come to Tokyo fairly often and talk to customers about software defined networking and their data center needs and, and their cloud requirements. You know, it's been a very, very interesting time in the industry the last several years with.、Uh, The advent of cloud and, and、uh, server virtualization and the changes that have happened in, in the compute industry. And、uh, we started looking at the network use case for that about three years ago, maybe four years ago. And this was just in the beginning when software defined networking was becoming something and, and open flow and these sorts of technologies were getting started. And、uh, my good friend Martin s a s a t o who just spoke next door,、um, was doing his work at Stanford. And, and,、uh, So, the Nuage team、uh, comes from Alcatel Lucent, and, and we've got a long history of, of developing very advanced networking platforms and routing solutions.、Uh, we've got a very successful router product line called the、uh, 7750 service router and, and various products around that. And、uh, this team in Mountain View, California, started looking at the software defined networking space and the data center space and the cloud space. And we founded Nuage Networks. So, Nuage is a wholly owned venture of Alcatel Lucent. And we do leverage a lot of the, our, our、uh, fundamental understanding of networking technologies to deliver what we think is a very exciting network virtualization platform. So, I'm going to talk to you a little bit today about what SDN is and, and what we've been seeing in the industry over the last little while.、Um, you know, there's been a lot of innovation and development,、uh, open flow controllers, and, and、uh, Network virtualization,、um, technologies like VXLAN and overlays to, to create virtual networks and start to get around some of the limitations of VLANs and physical network infrastructure.、Um, we've seen things like white box switching or, or very low cost switching platforms take off and more and more vendors and, and、uh, solutions being developed around being able to buy a really low cost switch or, or some sort of open flow program device. Um, and then we've seen a lot of open source projects grow around this.、Uh, the Open Daylight project, of course, being one.、Um, and then、uh, a lot of the activities within OpenStack and delivering cloud networking with OpenStack, which is one of the things I'm going to specifically talk about today. And then, really, you know, the whole goal of all of this is to provide a network as a service.、Um, you know, much like we've had infrastructure as a service or platforms as a service develop within cloud. We want to be able to offer networking as a very simple, consumable service that aligns nicely with what that cloud system is, is offering.、Uh, you know, why we started looking at this? Well, you know, the, the first thing was, was let's look at reducing cost, right?、Um, you know, and I mean cost in hardware and switching, but I also mean reducing cost in operational expenses and, and how I. Uh, provision network services and how I, I、uh, deploy new elements into my network and, and, and new, new network constructs on top of my, my networking. And, and so, you know, we think we can improve our asset utilization by virtualizing the network and leverage SDN, maybe better optimize, use the, uh, optim better optimize the use of the resources in the network. But we also want to be able to automate services, provide a self service model of provisioning. Allow my tenants or my customers to、uh, just consume network services on demand with a couple of clicks right alongside their deployment of compute.、Um, the goal here is to really make the network more cloud like, to make it more dynamic, just like the cloud services have become. 
Um, and really, the driver for this is, is cloud, as I've mentioned. You know, cloud is very much changing the way technology is being consumed. Um, you know, we've gone away from this order and wait, you know, opening a trouble ticket or calling my vendor and waiting for a compute system to be delivered, waiting for my network team to plug in some servers and wire them up and waiting, into this model where I have instant gratification. And then around this, we've built this whole ecosystem of, of services and of, uh, you know, a personalized catalog of, of compute and application and resources that me as a developer or as a, a uh, server administrator can just automatically consume on demand. And this has really driven a lot of changes around what customers expect and what they expect from their network. We've virtualized and automated and implemented auto instantiation or auto deployment models of compute. So my compute systems and the corresponding applications can be deployed in minutes, you know, sometimes less than minutes, sometimes seconds. And we've partially virtualized some of the networking things, right? I mean, we have VLANs, we have virtual routers and virtual firewalls. So we've started to make some of the compute things a bit more virtualized, but we're still doing a lot of manual configuration. You know, the traditional model of network configuration is I call my help desk and wait for a week or two weeks for that help desk to process that change request, for my network team to physically wire up services, for my uh, switching team to provision my VLANs and the firewalls to be provisioned and so on and so on. And then all those things have to be reviewed by a, a security or audit team, um, you, you know, usually pretty manually. And, and so these configurations can take days or weeks and really the network is holding things, these things back. Um, we've seen a lot of innovators in cloud uh, talk about how the network is holding back their cloud systems from being as powerful as they would like them to be. With the introduction of software-defined networking, we've made some improvements. You know, I've virtualized more things. I have virtual switches. I can start to provision some of my virtual firewall and routing constructs, maybe through OpenStack or other tools, where I've automated some things, and some elements take minutes to deploy, but not everything. The WAN services are probably a separate entity that are managing those things. My perimeter firewalls are probably a separate security team that isn't necessarily tightly aligned with the application teams as these things deployed. So we've made some incremental improvements, but we haven't really addressed the end-to-end -end problem yet. You know, the problem that we have is teams still build networks. Committees and review processes define how a network is going to be built. Every time I want to deploy a new network service in my cloud, I likely have to go through an entire process of review, of allocating my VLANs and my IP addressing, of ensuring that my WAN is pre-configured to accommodate that connection, and then somebody has to connect that firewall and provision those things. And when I start looking at a network as a service environment, something like OpenStack's Neutron, or even Amazon Web Services and their VPC construct, where I can create virtual networks in the cloud, I'm still building a network. I'm still having to worry about routing and, and uh, you know, firewall rules and the specific IP addressing for my application. But what I've actually done in this case is I've delegated the responsibility for a lot of that to a DevOps team. And a DevOps team is an application team or a server team. They know Linux systems and they know databases and they know web servers. They don't know IP routes. They don't know how OSPF works. They don't know how to provision networks. But I'm burdening them with a lot of the overhead that comes along with building a network. And a lot of us are network engineers, and we understand these things. And you've tried talking to server guys about networking. As far as they know, it's the red wire they plugged into the server. They don't know what goes on in the background. And if I'm forcing them to learn these things and to understand network topologies and network architectures every time they deploy a virtual instance, I haven't really fixed the problem. I've just pushed the problem onto somebody else. And uh, you know, an example of this is the current state of OpenStack Neutron. Um, as many of you know, the OpenStack Neutron project is the networking project within OpenStack. And we've made great progress here and done some really exciting things. You know, we can provide the building blocks to create virtual networks and logical topologies within OpenStack. I can create networks, I can define ports, I can define subnets and routers and security groups and access lists and all the things that make up a network topology. And I've got a nice, powerful API approach to this 
So my DevOps team can go and call a Neutron command to create a network and to assign an IP address to that network and to add a router interface to that network. But like I said before, it's not really consumable by the DevOps team. I'm pushing a lot of the burden of that topology definition onto my cloud users. And the cloud users don't want to worry about these sorts of things. The cloud user or the application team, they understand what this application needs. They understand how this application needs to communicate to each other. They know that my web servers have to be separate from my app servers, and my app servers have to be separate from my database servers. And they understand that I need to allow port 443 and, and, and SSH and things between these, these hosts so that they can communicate for their application. But they shouldn't be burdened with which port it's on and what VLAN it's attached to and what my specific IP addresses are. So you know, the DevOps team just needs a kind of a, a, a viewpoint from a step back that's a bit more abstracted that lets them just define these really simple connectivity models without having the overhead of needing to define all of the specific network topologies. But remember, the network team still worries about those things. The network team needs to be able to ensure that I'm using the appropriate router, that I have IP addresses assigned that are routable. I can't just let things be chosen um, randomly. There is still structure to a network infrastructure. And then I still need to be able to represent my network connectivity to my security auditors to make sure that one flow is going through a, an intrusion prevention device and another flow can travel to the public internet and my public facing servers are isolated from my pr private elements. So I still need to be able to give the view to my network administrator to define how a network service is delivered and then audit that network service and ensure that it's compliant. So what we propose is a policy approach to networking. And by policy, I simply mean templates of network service. And so in the model that Nuage is, is pushing forward and that we're working on with OpenStack and even Open Daylight is this approach where we take network templates that define the network service. And that network template is defined by a network administrator. And the network administrator defines the subnets and the security policies that need to accommodate an application. And you know, in best practice, that network template is defined with the uh, application team. So you're working together with your application teams to say, when I deploy this new application, I'm going to need these ports open, and I'm going to need this segmentation. And that all gets defined and created. And yes, it's created manually, but it's created manually once and then stored as a template that can be reused again and again. And then when that application is deployed into the network, there is a mechanism to ev evaluate the user of that network, the application type, the business rule for that given application, and then the appropriate template is chosen from a catalog of templates and automatically deployed into the network. I'm not manually provisioning every one of these network services at deployment time. I'm letting that happen automatically based on the constructs and based on the parameters I defined in the template beforehand. This is a policy approach to networking. A design once and reuse multiple times approach. This is very similar to what we do in application development, where I write a piece of code and compile it in an executable that I, that I can then run over and over and over again. So what this lets us create are these reusable network sandboxes, where the network connectivity for a given application is contained within some virtual layer. It's segmented and separated from the other elements within my network. I can use VLANs. I can use VXLAN. I can use GRE tunnels. The mechanism doesn't matter as much as the service that we provide to that application. So that application gets the services it needs with the connectivity requirements that, it, that have been defined in a model that does not burden the developer with worrying about how we implement. And so what is a network policy? Well, a really good example of this is the development work that's happening within OpenStack today. Um, the OpenStack Neutron project has taken on a new blueprint that we call the group-based policy abstraction model. Um, and that URL that is there, and these slides will, of course, be posted online so you can follow the links. I've got a couple other links later. 
But right from the text of this blueprint, we define a network policy as an application-centric approach to networking, where we move away from traditional network constructs like ports and subnets and routers into a more abstracted, application developer-friendly model, you know, aiming for a highly abstracted interface to express the desired application components and their connectivity requirements at, at, a, at a model that does not govern how I implement those. So the application team can consume a very simple template without having to worry about whether or not I'm using a VLAN or VXLAN or some other mechanism under the covers to achieve that connectivity. All of those things are defined by the network administrator when the policy is created in the beginning. And so within OpenStack, we introduce a few new concepts. Um, there's this concept called an endpoint, which is anything that's addressable by an IP address. Um, this is a virtual machine. This is a physical router. Uh, this is a, uh, a firewall interface. Um, that's an endpoint. And then we group those endpoints together into endpoint groups. Um, which are just a grouping of similar endpoints. So I'd put all my web servers in one endpoint group, and I'd put all my database servers in another endpoint group. And then we define policy rules, which are security policies, access lists, firewall rules, those sorts of things, that define the specific communication criteria for that application. So an example of policy rule would be allow port 80 from subnet 1 to subnet 2. Those are the specific policy rules. And then those policy rules would be grouped in with a into a contract. And so the web contract might be all of the ports I'm going to allow from a public network to my web uh, subnet or my web group. And then my app contract might be all of the security policy and definition of how I allow um, connectivity between my web tier and my application tier. And then these are presented to the user in a very, very simple, consumable way. Now, back to that point I made about application development before. You know, to achieve this policy-driven uh, network, we look back to how we developed applications in the first place. Remember, I would, you know, if, when you were studying computer science in school, you, you probably sat down in front of a, an editor and writ, wrote some C code. And you wrote a very simple hello world uh, written in C that defined the constructs of that application. And all that was was just some text that defined the application. It didn't do anything, it just defined it. Then I would compile that application into machine instructions. And that became my template that I could reuse over and over again. That executable file that is the result of compiling my source code. And then I wouldn't do anything with that executable until runtime. It would just sit there chewing up a little bit of disk space, or sometimes a lot of disk space, waiting to be ran. And when I run that application, when I execute that application, when I instantiate that application, it gets translated into the specific elements to run that application on that computer. I address it to memory registers, you know, CPU locations, CPU cores, all of those things, at instantiation time. And then when that application's done, I remove that from the CPU and from the system, and it just sits there idle waiting to be instantiated again. So let's take that same approach to deploying these network topologies. You know, we first define the connectivity requirements, we map them to a network service, and then we implement them when the service is deployed. So I would create those application attributes through some sort of self-service portal, through Neutron API calls, whatever my mechanism is to define the policy, then that policy would be saved and associated to some technology attributes. So I'd associate those application requirements to a given network definition or network service definition. And then when it's time to deploy that application onto the network, there's some evaluation process that says, which policy is this application going to use? And that then would be pushed into the network containing the specifics of that network service the IP addressing, the firewall rules, the specific elements that need to be provisioned to provide that service. S very, very similar model to how we build applications. And we deploy this into a network template or a network policy. So now I get into my very short and not too pushy sales part portion of the presentation. Nuage Networks has been delivering a solution that achieves this for over a year. 
Uh, we just shipped our third release of our product about a month ago. We've got about 20 customers around the world deploying Nuage into production today, and we've done almost 100 trials, and those things are moving forward very well. So we're gaining a lot of experience doing policy-based networking and a lot of real-world networks already. We have an abstracted view that allows a network administrator to create a network template, and then compute users can easily consume those templates from OpenStack, from VMware, from whatever compute platform they're using. We can provide L2 and L3 routing. We can apply ACLs and some stateful functions. We can apply QoS and, and uh, service chaining and policy routing to those elements to create virtual network constructs that are fully featured that support all of the networking services that your applications would need. Now, we've developed a really great product that does this, and it's our product, and it works really well in the Nuage solution. But when we interact with something like OpenStack, the OpenStack APIs are not as advanced as the services that we can provide. So this is why we participate in OpenStack, to try and move this development forward to enable a more advanced networking model within OpenStack that you as a customer can take advantage of. And then we're going to deliver a product that does that very, very well at very large scale. Um, so the Nuage platform is three elements, starting from the bottom up. We have the virtual routing and switching element, which is based on Open vSwitch and runs on your hypervisor. But we've enhanced that Open vSwitch and put some of our own agent code on top of that that runs in user space. That'll do L3 packet lookup routing. We'll terminate uh, MPLS over GRE to interconnect with my wide area network. Uh, we also have a hardware gateway that essentially looks like one of our endpoint elements or a virtual line card in our, our virtual routing system. Um, so I can connect bare metal assets and servers and physical perimeter firewalls and things into this virtualization platform. We have our own SDN controller we call the Virtualized Services Controller. Uh, it's a logical software SDN controller that controls all of our forwarding elements. Um, we do use OpenFlow and things like that inside the solution to program our forwarding devices. But our SDN controller is actually the operating system from the Alcatel, router, uh, Alcatel Lucent 7750 router. So it's running SROS. It's a very advanced routing operating system with full featured support for all IGPs, OSPF, ISIS, support for BGP. And we leverage these BGP capabilities to scale out our SDN solution to cover hundreds of thousands of servers across multiple data centers. So we have a federated model of our SDN controller that achieves a, a very scale-out, scalable solution. And then lastly, the, the piece on top of it is our policy engine. It's the virtualized services directory. And this is a cluster of machines that handles all of the user database, stores all those policies, presents it in a very pretty GUI that we can demonstrate to you at our booth a little bit later on, and then presents northbound APIs that can integrate with telco OSS systems that you can build custom applications around. And we've built plugins with OpenStack, with vCenter and vCloud Director, and with CloudStack. And we're also working very closely with a couple of partners like Hewlett Packard, like HP, to enhance those capabilities and support their OpenStack distributions and work with their cloud orchestration systems, doing things that might be a bit more advanced than what's available in the base level open source cloud systems. And we do this in an open uh, solution, like I said. We have implementation that integrates with all of these uh, cloud systems. Um, we will work with any server and any hypervisor. So we can run in KVM, we can run in Xen, and we can run in VMware on ESX. And we can virtualize any data center network. We're using VXLAN and we're using GRE tunnels to build overlay networks, which means if the physical network can transport an IP packet, you can run the Nuage solution there. Um, so where it's very, very easy to get integrated into just about any data center environment. And I really believe that we're the only solution on the market that can run with all three of these cloud systems simultaneously, allowing you to provide consistent networking capabilities across OpenStack and VMware and CloudStack within the same implementation. So we have a lot of cloud customers that are offering OpenStack for a low-cost cloud and are also offering VMware for a higher SLA, higher-featured cloud. 
and they're mixing these things together and using nuage to achieve network connectivity between them. And then this model scales and federates so I can deploy it into multiple data centers, again providing seamless consistent network connectivity and services across multiple sites. And so what this gives us, gets us to is a very powerful um, template-based and role-based workflow. So I have a model now where as a network administrator, I can create these network templates, I can work with my security teams to make sure that those network services are compliant with the application security requirements. I can work with my application team to ensure that those network definitions match what that application requires. And then those templates are saved into the Nuage Networks VSP platform. And when compute users come along to request applications or to start those applications through the OpenStack Horizon interface or whatever they may be, the compute systems are deployed automatically through the cloud systems that exist today, and the network services are deployed automatically based on those predefined templates in a very rapid manner so that the network can match that cloud and the network can act more like a cloud service. Service velocity in this model is not hindered by manual process. The only manual process in this system is the definition of the template in the first place, when I create the template in the application in the beginning. Every time a new tenant wants to deploy this service, every time a new application is started, it just consumes one of those templates that was predefined in a very rapid manner, so I'm getting the network out of the way of the cloud system and its true capabilities. So to kind of sum things up, I think I went a little quicker than I wanted to, but <laughs> to sum up, uh, you know, uh, the creation of these distributed virtual switches and virtual routers and a lot of the SDN solutions that are on the market are very good. Um, you know, it's great for, then for defining these virtual networks. It's better than a lot of the networking models that we had before. We're no longer limited by 4,000 VLANs. Um, we can leverage and uh, best of breed hardware in a much easier way than we could before. But when I deploy 1,000 virtual routers into my network, now I have 1,000 routers to manage. And that recreates a lot of management challenges, a lot of configuration challenges. And pushing that responsibility onto my application and DevOps team is not the right approach. Um, and so provisioning and managing these endpoints really can't be done in the traditional model using the traditional methodology. We need to change it to a policy abstracted framework. And this policy framework is actually well proven and has been used in service provider networks for a long time. There's a policy engine behind my LTE system. So when I landed in Tokyo the other day, I didn't have to call ahead to the provider here in Tokyo and let them know I was coming to town and let them know they had to pre-provision a service. There's a policy framework in place, so when I turned on my phone, the phone talked to the network, the network talked to the policy engine that AT&T runs back in the US that handles my phone, fed that policy back to the local provider here in Japan, and that network service was automatically created based on my template. We've been doing this for a long time in LTE and carrier networks. Let's bring this model to cloud networks and data center networks, and we can do this today. So for more information, nuagenetworks.net is our website. There's a lot of information on there. There's some recordings of some demos, so you can see our user interface. Um, you can read more about the open source activities that are going on around policy-based abstraction. Um, Sorry, the slides aren't quite aligned here. So when I post these, these slides online, you'll get the links to the OpenStack and Neutron group-based policy uh, system. And uh, I've also got a link in the, in the slide deck about um, similar work happening within Open Daylight and their policy uh, system. And come see us in the um, SDI showcase here on the floor. We do have demos running in our booth and a, and a very smart team of people who speak Japanese far better than I do, who can talk to you all about the Nuage solution and what we have to offer. So thank you very much for your time today. Um, follow Nuage Networks on Twitter. Follow me on Twitter. And uh, you'll see when I post the slides. And, and uh, um, we've got some very interesting bloggers on our team who like to talk about this technology. Uh, the Nuage team is very involved in OpenStack and is very passionate about open source and these cloud systems. And so, Stay in touch with us, and, and uh, we can all learn together. 
thank you again for your time, and uh, enjoy the rest of the show. みなさま、ご清聴誠にありがとうございました。以上をもちまして、インターロップ基調講演、KA7 を終了とさせていただきます。